Please stand. Once more, because we weren't quite ready, were we? I don't think we were quite ready for that. So let's come on and celebrate again from the top, and we can really get into the swing of it this morning. Okay, thank you, Matt. <laughs>
that was much better, wasn't it? We got into the swing of it quite well, second time through. So, thank you for that. We're going to have some verses now from Acts and chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. We're going to have several readings this morning, all from Acts, but we'll start off with this little section, Acts 2, verses 1 to 4. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force, no one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wild fire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. Well, that's our first reading and we're going to have a great song now, Thou Christ of Burning, Cleansing Flame. So I think we have to stand up for that one because it's a too good a song to sit down for. So let's stand for that and let's enjoy singing now, Christ of Burning, Cleansing Flame. <laughs> Continue on in our reading, and we're going to have a few more verses then from uh, Acts chapter 2 and verses 5 to 13 this time. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then, when they heard, one after another, their own mother tongues being spoken, they were thunderstruck. They couldn't, for the life of them, figure out what was going on and kept saying, Are these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? Parthians, Medes, 
Elamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene. Immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head nor tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joked, they're drunk on cheap wine. Let's sing another song. Another good spirit song. <coughs> Who is it tells me what to do? Well, that's a very good question, isn't it? Who is it tells me what to do? Is it her indoors or you know who are upstairs? So let's have a sing of this. Who is it tells me what to do and helps me? This is the question, isn't it? Helps me to obey. Let's enjoy this song together. <laughs> off the last little bit of our reading and it starts at verse 14 if you're following in a different translation. <coughs> now you just heard that bit about saying that, uh, that they were all drunk on cheap wine. Well that's when Peter stood up and backed by the other 11 spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk, as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters. Your young men will see visions. Your old men dream dreams. When the time
time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvellous. And whoever calls out for help to me, God will be saved. Well, amen to those great words and sharing some thoughts on that a little later. Well, we're going to have a beautiful song now. Spirit divine, come as of old with healing in your train. Come as thou didst to sanctify. Let naught of sin remain. Let's sing this together, shall we? Spirit divine, come as old. Lord, this morning, we do indeed ask that you will come, that you will revive every spirit here and those who were not able to be here. Lord, we pray for that Pentecostal fire. We pray for that presence just to inspire us once again, just to enlighten us, to make us go forward, to work for the kingdom where we are here in Govan. So Lord, just now at this time in our meeting, we ask that you'll come and you'll be with us as we share together in worship, as we sing, as we pray, as we listen to our young people. Just be with us, we pray, 
because we ask in your wonderful, powerful name here this morning. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to be here this morning on this special day, this day of Pentecost. We've mentioned about young people, and they're going to come now and give us some blessing with their uh, with the band, the YP band first, and then the singing company, and we're just going to enjoy. Sorry? Oh, no YP band this morning. Sorry. Oh yes, we've got massed band this morning. Yes, the, se- <laughs> the youngsters are playing with the with the senior band this morning, and that's also very very good. So we'll have the singing company, please. There we are. I've got it the right way around this time. Come along, folks. sisters too. It won't be easy, but I'll do my best. I know that I can do it with you. Well done, youngsters. That was good, wasn't it? I want to live right. Well, I wondered if we had a song about the coming of the Holy Spirit this morning. There might be one or two people that might like to share where we can see the Spirit of God at work in our world today. I didn't realize we had such a a wide collection on the right-hand side of the balcony up here. Good morning, comrades. When you're sitting over here, you don't know they're there, do you? There are people up there. Just say hello, band. Say hello to the comp. There we go, that's it. Make sure we're all inclusive. There's people up on the other side as well. Good to see you all this morning. Where can we see the Spirit of God at work? Here? Maybe? Perhaps somebody would like to share where they can see the Spirit of God at work. When we sung, let's sing the first verse of this song. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Born of the Spirit is this, this words that come into this word. And I think it's, um, the chorus talks about the coming of the Holy Spirit into our lives. So let's, uh, let's see what happens. If 
we want to go home earlier? Uh, you know, I'm just, just waiting. There we are. Wait. Are you ready? <laughs> You're ready. Introduction, please. Go. see the Spirit of God working. You can. I tell you what, hold on. Care. Come here, Care, quickly. <laughs> he's, got, he's a rugby player. He should be able to do it quite quickly. Only don't throw it because it's very expensive. There he goes. Look at that. Who'd like that energy this morning? Yes. yes. Thank you. He's going to win a marathon next week. <laughs> uh, just greetings from South Africa. Um, it's great to be here, and I'd just like to say the Spirit of God is moving in this world today. Um, when we are working towards a revival with 1,000 souls in Port Elizabeth, the city where I'm serving in the Salvation Army there, um, and it's a united church venture so we need your prayers for the thousand souls but i believe in a harvest of souls here in govan in this city too in the city that i was born in i would also like to say that it's wonderful to be here and just worship with you i feel very humbled um thank you very much for such a warm um welcome it's great to hear the band and everybody singing and see commissioner for scythe again and old friends from the past, but what I'd like to say is that when we're in Port Elizabeth Central, we try to do a lot of outreach when we do our feeding scheme, and we're going to hospitals, to the queues that are waiting to get into the clinics. We're going to the mothers and the babies who are waiting at the maternity clinics, and we're finding that people are responding to the Lord, to the gospel. They are even coming to me to get tracts and gospels of John, and they want to be prayed with. Hardly anybody has refused a prayer. So every month we're able to pray with about 500 people. Every needy person that receives soup and sandwiches is prayed with. Every mother that receives a gospel we pray for and bless the children in the name of Jesus. And uh, we go outside in the streets in Central and there's a lot of prostitution, drug addiction, drug peddling, and it is a very dangerous area, um, especially in the evenings. But we do find that people are responding to Jesus. And we went to the clinic recently. We're going there every week. But the one week there were three university students. And they were asking me about what I believed and what did I believe about heaven and the resurrection and so on. And I was able to share with them and um, two of them were not saved, and they wanted to pray the sinner's prayer with me right there in the queue with all the other people around Ill on the pavement. And it was such a wonderful joy to be able to pray the sinner's prayer. And they, I said to them, do you really mean that? They said, we are serious. We have accepted Jesus today for the first time. So, you know, I think often as Christians, it takes courage to offer people to pray with them. But when we take that step of faith 
um, God comes through. The Holy Spirit convicts, and he convicts people today just as he did way back in the book of Acts. And he's convicting us this morning to go out and share his love and the power because the power of the Holy Spirit is immeasurable and it's ours. It's ours. So I'd just like to say hallelujah and may God bless you all. You're in our prayers. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Well, that's, how, that's good to hear, isn't it? Has had the second verse, and then let's hear if um, anybody else would like to share where we can see the Spirit of God at work today. Thank you. Oh, the Spirit. like to share where they think the spirit is at work who was first oh is that all it was okay let's the back there you may have to come forward a bit because the squelch has turned up hi i'm um, this is kind of a borrowed testimony, but I thought it was, it really touched me. Um, there's a, a young man in my mother's church whose name is Praveen. He's a student over here from East India. Um, he's, can't remember what he's studying, it doesn't matter. But he'd gone back home um, during the pandemic for his sister's wedding. Uh, and the day before the wedding, they had all got the family together and were going to buy some flowers to make it beautiful. Uh, there were eight people in the vehicle when it was hit by a lorry and everyone was killed. The bride, the bride's mother, the uncle of the bride, his wife, um, and some other family members. Um, so what had started out as a celebration ended up as a horrendous tragedy. From that, the, the family decided, they're, they're a Christian family, um, they decided that they didn't want the tragedy to be the, the memory of, of what happened. And so they set up uh, a charity. They moved, one, one of the uncles was a pastor in a completely different part of India. Um, and he and his wife decided to, to leave the church that they were pastoring in the hands of one of their junior pastors and move to back to the family home in order to take care of two children that had been orphaned. Um, and in so doing, they decided that they would set up a new church and, and set up this charity. So the new church, which started out with half a dozen members, now has over 100 members worshipping every Sunday. Um, and they have raised huge sums of money, which they put towards projects that we would very much recognise. Housing, help with burial costs, um, help with, with orphanages. And they are just making such a difference in that little area um, in India and, and from that tragedy the Holy Spirit has really worked and, and has moved and souls have been saved and lives have been changed. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Well there's one more opportunity. We'll have, uh, we'll have the last verse I think please of this song and if anybody else would like to see Care running around you can stay down there. Have a seat in the middle there Care. <laughs> That's it. Well done. Thank you.
take up our offering, but if anyone else would like to share what the, if they think the Holy Spirit is working in the world today, this is your chance. Right, it's time to give in our offering. And uh, what we're doing here at the moment, in case you're a bit confused, is we're not actually taking the plate round. If you want to bring money to the plate, you can do. Um, there's a plate of both sides, and uh, or, or can give in a retirement collection, <coughs> whichever way it works. But we'll listen to some music as we consider our giving just now. Thank you. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you that we can come into your church on this great day of rejoicing and the day we celebrate your spirit coming to dwell amongst us. And as part of our celebration and our worship, we give back to you with our tithes and our offerings. Please bless our giving and help us to use it so that your church continues to grow. We ask this in your name. Amen. Good morning to you all on this glorious Pentecost Sunday. It's good to have visitors with us this morning. We've already heard from Patricia. It's lovely to hear your testimony this morning. Patricia Venikirk, known to many of us as Patty Neal, in days gone by, so lovely to have you with us. It's also good to have Stephen Coyer, all the way from Sydney. Welcome. And nice to see Stephen Neal with us. We haven't seen you for a while, Stephen, so good that you're able to worship with us. And we also have Ian, who's here for the first time this morning. So it's good to have Ian, who's sitting over here with us as well this morning. This coming week, our Zoom Bible study will be held on Tuesday at half past seven, and it will be led by Major Christine Bailey. Her theme will be, I have called you friends. And for those who are attending in preparation, we've been asked to think about some friendships in the Bible, what the qualities of friendships are, and what Jesus says about friendship. So that is Tuesday at half past seven and everyone is welcome to log on. Next Sunday is our young people's anniversary and we look forward very much to sharing with our young people and their leaders at 10.25. And it will be a very special morning for Chelsea and Blossom as they will be enrolled as junior soldiers. As I announced last week, the core outing will now be postponed until after the summer holidays eh, in August. Summer school is a very important experience for our young people and we would like to raise some funds to help them with the cost of attending. There were plans to have a coffee morning but it's very difficult to, to slot that in. So next Sunday there will be some cakes and plants for sale after our morning meeting as well as a retiring collection for donations. It has been wonderful to see how our community work has continued to grow, none more so than our musical tots under the leadership of Laura. Um, Laura would like to keep this programme running during the month of July. However, in order to do that, she does need some assistance. So if you're able to give a couple of hours on a Tuesday morning from half past ten, then please speak to Laura for more information. Looking further ahead, our last songster practice for this season will be held on Monday the 20th of June at half past seven. This will be an open practice. 
So if you've ever wondered what happens in a songster practice, now's your chance to come along and find out. Um, and you will be very welcome to attend. Lydia just mentioned to me before this morning's meeting that she is doing a fundraiser next Saturday um, in Govan from 8 until 12 uh, with a market stall fundraising for her charity if anyone is available to, to come along. A very big thank you to everyone who was able to take part in Friday's Govan Fair Parade. To the senior and the young people's band, to Timbrels, to members of our young people's and our senior corps and also we were able to have the emergency vehicle there as well which was excellent. What a response we got, what a turnout, what weather, it was just wonderful but what a response we got um, and lots of comments as we were passing and again what a privilege to be able to, to witness in that way. We continue to uphold members of our fellowship who do need our prayerful support at this time. I would ask that you pray for all those who have health concerns and are no longer able to worship with us. Um, Mark and Tracy hosted a, a meal yesterday for the retired officers in the division, um, which was great and, and just something that was very much needed and gave them time of fellowship together. Um, and it was great that Doug and I, Wayne and Jimmy and Chrissy were able to attend as well. But we do remember people like Ken Kilgour, eh, Anza, and I know that there are others who used to be um, faithful here, serving at the core, but are no longer able to do so. We remember Major Maisie, Dorothy, Jessie and Georgie's sister Sandra in their care homes. And please also remember our young people. We are approaching the end of the school year. Um, for many, there will be awaiting exam results. So please just keep our young people in your thoughts and prayers just now. And remember our community work um, here within this area of Govan. Where's Evie? Evie, come here quickly and show me what you've got there and show everyone else. Evie had a very busy day yesterday. A very busy day. I haven't got the microphone here, so you'll just need to shout. Evie, where, come up to this mic and tell everyone where you were yesterday. What were you doing yesterday? Go right up to gymnastics competition. Did you hear that? A gymnastics competition she was in and she didn't come away empty handed. It was her first gymnastics competition. So I want you to show everyone what you got. gymnastics competition and she won a silver trophy I think that is amazing and we just look forward to hearing all about your progress and all the other things that you do in gymnastics so very well done from all of us well done thank you for coming up <laughs> this morning our flowers have been donated by Sophia and we say thank you for enhancing our worship through these, this lovely gift. Thank you so much. And thank you for your attention to these announcements. That was good for Evie, getting um, some medals like that. I, I thought we were going to have a demonstration then, but um, maybe that's later on. Maybe she's not wearing quite the right gear, is that so? But um, she's going to go on to great things, I'm sure, and... Uh, it will be good to see how that develops. So thanks for um, all of that, hearing all those things, and uh, let's hope we remember them all. We're going to have a musical contribution from the band now, please.
Well, that was terrific, wasn't it? And it's been a great weekend of celebration, hasn't it? I don't know whether you've been following any of the activities and, and all of the things that have been shown for the Platinum Jubilee. It's been, it's been great. I've been really enjoying so much of it. And the, the fact that um, the overriding sort of thing for me is that the Queen's <laughs> faith is what has sustained her throughout her 70 years of being queen. And I think that's really quite something. It's her faith that has just been there for her at every single part of that time. And I think that that's a great thing for us to um, remember uh, and to praise um, God for. So I thought we could have a few celebration prayers this morning because it's a celebration weekend. So many things have happened and we're all thinking um, good, hopefully joyful, happy thoughts. So let's have some celebration prayers this morning, shall we? Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you this morning for the Queen and for her faith that has sustained and kept her strong throughout her 70 long years as queen and monarch of this uh, united country. So Lord, we thank you for her and we ask that you will bless her and keep her strong as she continues to be the monarch that you want her to be. So be with her, we pray, Lord, for we ask in your name. And Lord, we thank you for this weekend, for all the many celebrations, for the joy, for the hopefulness, for the looking to the future, rather than always focusing on the past, perhaps. So Lord, we thank you for that. May it be a joyful time. May we continue this joy on into the coming months and years to come. Lord, we also give thanks for our core here, for all those who come and who find spiritual strength and their faith restored and revived here at this church in Govan. And Lord, we thank you for the many good things that are happening here for the people who have come in, who have come to join us in faith and in worship, for the community program that we're able to run here each week for those who need help and um, just support when times are difficult. And so, Lord, we ask that you will continue to bless us. Bless all of the things that happen here. Bless all of those who help and serve. Maybe prompt some of those who are not doing what they could to maybe come forward and just offer of their services to keep our program and all the many things that we would like to do going forward. And Lord, last of all, we ask that you will just be with the group on Tuesday who meets to just put into words the mission and the forward vision of this core as we move <coughs> forward in this new place, this wonderful building, this wonderful facility in Govan. So we ask, Lord, that you will bless all of those who join together on Tuesday that we may put together something that will take us forward into the year of 2023 and beyond in this wonderful facility that we have. So Lord, we ask that you will bless us. We ask that you will bless all of those who come. And we ask that you will inspire us by your spirit to do even more for your kingdom here in Govan. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to have the message from the songsters now, and it couldn't really be anything other than every time I feel the spirit.
done the songsters after the extensive rehearsal. I only say that because I only asked Matt if we could do, have that at the end of the week after the songster practice. So there we go. They did very well, didn't they? Except for my wife who got completely lost. But don't worry about that. <laughs> no one would have known. They do now. <laughs> well, here we are on this Pentecost Sunday, and once again we find ourselves celebrating. And it is a celebration, isn't it, when you think about it? It's one of the few um, um, Christian festivals. In fact, it's the only Christian festivals that hasn't been adopted by anybody else. You don't have Easter eggs, you don't have Christmas presents. You just have the celebration of the equipping of the power of the Holy Spirit, probably the most important, really, because it enables us to go forward and puts into power that which we do. And I think this um, section of scripture that we've heard this morning from Acts chapter 2 really help us, I think, because parts of Acts, who writes, the same writer as Luke, of course, if you, if you remember, um, he tries to be as accurate as possible and detail as accurately as possible the actual events as they happen. And as we read the accounts that are laid out in the book, it's, imagine, it's possible to imagine yourself looking at the story from different viewpoints and imaginations and how we look at things. And you see things in a different way. And every time we come back to the same story, you see something new, something different. And I think it certainly helps us. And uh, one way we can look at this story is that the and thing that picked up to me was the fact that the disciples were all together, it says, the scripture says the disciples were all together anticipating the gift of the Spirit. Now it depends on your interpretation of the gospel accounts, but the disciples believed that the Lord's Spirit was going to return. They didn't know what it would mean for them or how it was going to be, but that Spirit had been promised an enabling Spirit. And we can look at that through the gospel accounts as well. And as we look at this event, as we imagine this happening, we try to remember that the disciples didn't know what to expect. They didn't know what was going to happen. They had no idea. So I should imagine it was a very frightening event. Because when we're not familiar with something, when we don't know what's going to happen, it can be quite disturbing, can't it? Especially this uh, this, uh, this strong driving wind is what it has, this te text says. Strong driving wind and this idea of flames coming and touching each person. And the truth of the matter is the power of God can be a very frightening thing. When the Spirit of God comes upon us as individuals, upon us as a church, it can be a very frightening and disturbing thing. Sometimes we pray that the Lord will enter us. We've sung it this prayer this morning and we equip us. But do we really know what we're praying for? Are we prepared for the Lord to take control of our lives? Or are we willing to continue just to accept the status quo? If the Lord answers our prayer... It can be an extremely frightening thing because he may be asking us to do something that is totally unexpected. And if we were to be truthful, perhaps something we don't want to do. Peter received this power and it equipped him. And he immediately set out using that power. He didn't hang about. He didn't weigh up the ramifications. He didn't like to see if it was going to fit into the traditions that he was used to. Even, he didn't even wait to see if it was going to upset anyone. No, he immediately began to do what the Lord inspired and instructed him to do. He preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can see it in that text, can't you? Peter got up. I noticed Peter didn't go off to the room to write a few notes. Peter didn't go, um, let me just think about this for a minute. He got up and started to do what the Spirit told him to do. And when the Lord tells you to do something, you may not always be very popular when you do it. And the people around Peter belittled, tried to belittle him by suggesting that he was drunk. And we didn't arrange for people to drop their recycling glass in the bin 
during that moment. I think that was only just empty this morning. Before any of you arrived, that was emptied. I think it might be full by the end of the meeting. There you go. So what was Peter's response? Did he get angry? Did he get cross when people tried to belittle him? He was telling them something that they needed to hear, and it hurt them. Scripture tells them it hurt, tells us that it hurt him. It was difficult. And how did he do? Well, he began, of course, with the Jewish history, and he showed to people there listening that Jesus was the Messiah and that they had killed him. And it says the people listening were cut to the heart, depends on the translation you're using, and it tried to use, tried to establish how they could begin to put things right. How can we put this right, they said. And Peter said simply, repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of the Messiah, then your sins will be forgiven and you will receive the Holy Spirit. The promise is to you and to your children, to all who are far away and to everyone whom the Lord our God may call. And here we are, a result of that promise here this morning. That's why we're here, and a result of that exact promise. We are one of those children, those who are far away, not only in distance but in time. We can also repent, be baptized in the Spirit, and enter into the kingdom here today. Not go away and think about it. Not think what might be the ramifications. But to respond to the power of the Spirit. So what was the result of Pentecost? And what can it mean for us here today? Well, Pentecost was, of course, the changing point of the church. Up to this point, the church had been pretty aimless. There had been no point in their existence. They didn't achieve anything. They didn't see any results. Just read Acts chapter 1 if you want. It's not the most thrilling of chapters. The church wasn't really doing an awful lot. It was only when the Spirit came on them that the, pe that the people began to accept Jesus as Lord. Scripture says, as we read this morning, a sense of awe was felt by everyone, and day by day the Lord added new converts to their number. Before Pentecost, all that the disciples were worried about was who was going to replace Judas. They were inward-looking, concerned only with their own ranks. After Pentecost, their ministry became effective. Scripture says in one day, 3,000 were added to their numbers. I think that's a pretty good result. Want to put that on a form to DHQ, would you? 3,000. I think someone might be on the phone to question your figures. But there you go. This is what it said here. In one day, 3,000 were added to their numbers. Before Pentecost, they were a group of men and women who beliefs and practices were doomed to die from their infighting, their petty jealousies, and their lack of unifying spirit. Don't, that's not my words. This is in the scripture. You can see it. They were doomed because all they thought about was themselves. And after Pentecost, they became the center of the thrusting evangelical church of Jesus Christ, a church whose effectiveness has led to our knowledge of Christ here today. And of course, you know the question I'm going to ask. What are we? Are we pre-Pentecost Christians or are we post-Pentecost Christians? Are we those that are concerned with ourselves or are, there, are we those that are empowered by the power of the Spirit to do what the Spirit is calling us to do? This is not anything new. William Booth himself recognized it in this need in the Christians today when he wrote that the song that we sung so well this morning even to a different tune. It says, Thou Christ of burning cleansing flame, send the fire. Thy blood-bought gift today we claim, send the fire. Look down and see this waiting host. Give us the promised Holy Ghost. We want another Pentecost. Do we? Do we really? Are we ready for the power 
and the life-changing effect that's going to come on us when the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Well, I hope we are. And we want another Pentecost. And we're asking the Lord to send the fire. Send the fire. Send the fire. We're just going to sing, sing um, a song in moment of reflection here this morning. Um, and it's a song that you'll know well in a moment of my weakness. And it talks about that I implead to have the Holy Spirit come upon us. And as we sing this song, if you want to respond, is the Spirit's calling you? Of course, our place of prayer is here. If you'd like to come, and Toby can come and lead the song. You see the words there, and uh, powerful words they are too. So let's just sing this uh, uh, song, shall we? And if you want to come and pray, then of course our place is here.
And Lord, just this morning, we ask that your power will be resting on each one of us, that you will give us the power of the Holy Spirit so that we may go forward. May we not be frightened or apprehensive about what could happen because you promise that you'll be with us, you will equip us. And so, Lord, we just pray that this spirit will fall on each of us, that we will be empowered to just do your work for the building of the kingdom here in Govan, where we are. Be with us, we pray, Lord, for we ask in the powerful name of that spirit here this morning. Well, we're coming to the end of our meeting now and we're going to have a great song to finish with I dare to be different and um, because it's a celebration Sunday and because um, I just had a few moments of time in the week I made a cake so you'll be happy to know I made a lemon drizzle cake for us to share in our fellowship afterwards this morning so hallelujah Let's stand, shall we? And let's sing this great song, I Dare to Live the Life of Faith. And may that be a challenge to each one of us here to actually live that life of challenge as God has planned. Thank you.
grace together, shall we? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore.